For decades now, the stereotypical role of black characters in horror films have remained some of the most successful soul-jumping flicks. But in recent years, black horror films such as Get Out and Candyman have proven that black creatives can not only be the star of a film, but also be the innovators behind it. Our next guest, Dwayne Perkins, is a writer and actor of an upcoming film, The Blackening, which focuses on a black friend group that gets together for a weekend getaway to celebrate Juneteenth. What was supposed to be a fun-filled trip quickly becomes one of survival after they partake in a sinister game. Take a look. Pick a card. Or you die. In your predicament, the black character is always the first to die. I will spare your lives if you sacrifice the person you deem the blackest. Guys, I can prove I'm not the blackest. Prove it. I thought black Twitter was a type of seasoning. I like Jimmy Fallon without the roots. And wrong. I voted for Trump. <gasps> what? Twice. Twice. You oh my God. Very funny. Joining us now is the star and writer of the film, comedian Dwayne Perkins. Dwayne, thanks so much for joining us. Oh my God, thank you for having me. Oh, I'm that, so excited. That, that's why I'm excited to actually see the movie. So tell us about The Blackening. The title comes from a game, a sinister game that's yes. being played. Tell us about that game and how that influences the theme of the story. Yeah, so we really wanted a visual representation for the premise. So I wrote a sketch like a couple years ago in 2016 that eventually became the sketch that was filmed to put on Comedy Central, which was the sketch that Tracy Oliver, my co-writer, mm -hmm. saw it became the film. But the original premise was if the black person dies first and everyone's black, how do you decide who dies first <laughs> and who's the blackest? And so we wanted to create a game that embodied that premise. Uh, and as you can see, it is a wild game. <laughs> oh, the imagery is very um, reminiscent of some historical things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we just really wanted a, a fun way to take these friends on that terrifying journey. And, and tell us about, you know, you play with these really stereotypical tropes, but at the same time defy them. Kind of explain, you know, how you were able to incorporate both. Yeah, our biggest task and what we really set out to do was begin with tropes, because uh, we know that like there is certain ways that people perceive these people. And then using the film to constantly break down what people may think that they know about these people and to take a trope and make it into a well-fleshed out character. So like my character, for example, is like a gay best friend, which is a trope in films, but by the end, he's not just a gay best friend. He's a gay best friend who, has fear, who has bravery, who could be a hero. There's just so many facets to what we think a trope is. And so it was very fun to like give a little of what we know and then break it apart. As you were mentioning, the, the gay best friend, so you're a gay black man. Yes. Your character is also queer. Why was that important to bring your own identity into the narrative? As an artist, often I felt like the art that I wanted to create was not out there. I kept waiting for somebody to create a role for me. Uh, and I realized that I wanted to give an authentic point of view that I related to. Uh, and it was very important to show these different facets of blackness, because the goal is to let people know and to show that like blackness is not a monolith. We are all very different. And being queer is like one is a big part of who I am. And so I really wanted to give space to that character so that when people watch it, they hopefully it lets them know that like a gay character doesn't have to just be the assistant or just be the best friend. They could be a lead in a movie. How do you go about making a movie really scary, but at the same time, funny in, in a very sinister way. I mean, we saw that also in, in Get Out for a minute, like, you know, you're you're like holding on to the person next to you, but at the same time dying of laughter the next minute. Yeah, I think that fear and uh, laughter are very close. Um, and in my life, a lot of the scariest moments I've dealt with with levity. So being able to really take the audience on a journey where you have these high, intense, suspenseful moments, and once that happens, they are more open to receiving laughter because they're so tense. So it's the, the art form of like knowing when to use tension and when to not use tension. And why did you decide to do a horror movie? I mean, you could have easily done a comedy, really. I love horror, just like as a genre, and I think because of I've absorbed so many horror movies, I thought it was just a perfect environment for comedy, specifically with a large group of black people, because so much I think of black culture is a 
consequence of like survival. Like mm -hmm. a lot of what we've experienced in life is like resilience. And, I, and horror is a genre where I really wanted the lived experience of black people to matter. All right, Dwayne, we thank you so much for coming on. Wonderful conversation. His film, The Blackening, is out in theaters this Friday. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.